age, I've been around art because my grandfather was a painter. And I remember being a little kid and going into his studio and being in awe of the fact that he had a whole room dedicated to, to art, to painting. And he had all these drawers filled with brushes and oil paints and, and pencils. And it was like magic, you know? I used to have these intense urges to make stuff. And my parents called it having an art attack. Well, chain stitching started in France. The first machines were invented in the 1860s. And it was a way to emulate hand stitching, but still have complete control over the design. starts with an idea. Um, a client will come to me with an idea and we'll discuss it and I'll try to figure out what their vision is and then there's sketching so I usually sit down and sketch out just some ideas of what I think they want and try to bring their idea to life. And it's just a lot of communication trying to figure out exactly what the client wants and getting to a place where it's exactly how it needs to look and you're both really happy with it. Because not only does it need to be a sketch that they're happy with, it also needs to be able to translate well into chain stitching and that in itself is a challenge. the speed of the motor with my foot and the direction of the stitches with my hand. So this crank underneath the machine in combination with the teeth moving the fabric along is what makes you able to write. It's what allows you to write. Definitely messed up that E. I gotta read it. Up. <laughs> it's hard to talk and use your foot and your hand and think of letters, you know? Because you're spelling things out in your head, essentially, you know? It's tricky. It's a lot of stuff at the same time. The machines are incredibly temperamental. It's from the 1950s and it runs like it's from the 1950s. So a small change can mess up a stitch. If my jacket's bumping into the arm of my machine, just barely, if, it has, if there's a little bit of resistance, it throws the whole thing off. still have to add all this text here. When you hand over a finished project that you spent so many hours working on, it's been such a process, it feels like cathartic almost to give it to the person because you not only get to give them a piece of yourself, the hours of your life that you put into this piece, but you, they, you can see how much they appreciate it and how special they feel to have something made specifically for them and to get to participate in that process of bringing their idea to life is really incredible. There's this 
need and this desire for imperfection. There's this desire to have to slow down and to have something that is unique. So you're very much getting someone's thoughts and feelings and like their free their free hand, you're getting their handwriting. That is the response to a throwaway culture, is slowing down and being intentional and specific about the things that we have in our life and the things that we buy and the things that we consume. And it be, they become things that we keep around for a really long time. I think it is quality over quantity, you know? Less things, but better things, you know?